I'm Sheila G. Um, you may have heard of my track Smile, which um, I did with Roger Sanchez, which uh, got to US Billboard number one in the dance charts last year in May. Um, I'm currently working with Cy Holbert over here, and we've just released a track called Skin on Skin, and that's what brings me here. Hi, I'm Cy Holbert, uh, producer, songwriter. Um, I've worked with One Direction, Jess Glynn, Ed Sheeran, um, amongst other people in the past. And yeah, today we're doing uh, Sheila G's Skin on Skin. Yeah, so um, Skin on Skin, which uh, has been released in February. It's a song about uh, two people who want to reconnect. Um, and it's two dancers, as you see in the music video. And they're showing the meaning of the song through their dance. Uh, was introduced to Sheila, knew um, uh, uh, about her old track that did really well on the Billboard charts number one, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. So kind of knew a little bit of background um, uh, about what Sheila wanted. Um, and before the session, what I did with uh, the other guys working with a guy called Danny Harrison, um, we just pulled up some musical ideas to just start the process kind of going, uh, which is what we had when Sheila came into the studio with Bell, who's the other top liner, um, to give a direction, because it always helps to have a direction, even if it's not used, it's a starting point. Uh, in this particular instance, the, the starting point was used. So, Sheila, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so um, I'd written a couple of song ideas, because I like to come into the studio prepared. Um, so I literally have a songbook with me, came in, and the chemistry is really important when you're writing, working with other writers. And I think the chemistry was spot on, literally, the four of us, including Danny and Belle, we were in the studio, we started um, putting down initial ideas um, using one of the mics, and it just kind of grew from that point onwards. And it was a fusion of two tracks, which, um, which I'd written, and then with Belle sitting there, you know, we, we were just vibing off of each other. And then when it came to the main skin on skin, the phrasing's really, really important. So like obviously for Cy to guide the phrasing as well, that was key uh, to make the track what it is actually. What I tend to do when we're doing stuff like this is um, get a music loop up, just keep it revolving. Um, and I keep a, like a handheld mic, I mean that's just like a condenser that's literally plugged in. So you get musical ideas, you get them down straight away. You don't have to worry about the lyrics. It's kind of working out whether the melody um, it's going to go and see what kind of sounds good and what fits and so literally there would be we'd maybe take a hundred different takes of just different melody ideas they'd pass the uh the mic between themselves just to you know the odd lyric might come up but it's mm -hmm. mainly looking for the melody and the kind of you know, the feel of the song um and once we we get a, a big selection everybody's happy on it we'll literally start going through it and editing pieces and seeing what works where and dropping it in and then starting to literally sculpt the song from that. Um, and then I guess Sheila and Bill will then try and, um, you know, take the melody ideas and, and work the lyrics around that, see which words work, which words don't. Um, Cause some words sing well, depending on, you know, what you're doing. So um, what I'll do, I'll just set up the mic. Um, so it's live in the room, so you get a lot of you know the noise and stuff from the speakers. Not important at this stage when you're kind of trying to craft the, the melody. And we'll literally just um, take different different shots. Now I'm doing this on Cubase 5 because that's what I started the project on. Um, so this is what looks a little bit dated. But so yeah, you can see we've got you know just different ideas here. Um, so yeah, basically we get up a bit of music and we would just have uh, a handheld mic. Um, and Bell and Sheila will pass it between themselves, play with ideas, maybe play with lyrics, um, and we'll just literally keep the, the mic running and then edit up um, the bits that we think sound good and then sort of formulate lyrics around there and try and make it work. So um, on here you can see some of the, um, the recordings that we made. So they're all very basic. We've got one there, it sounds... Um, so it might, might sound a bit flat, but it's because um, it's we're getting the vibe down. Now that sounds in a different key because we actually changed the key of the song. We started, um, I think it was a semitone up, and then dropped it down. So a lot of these takes, which I won't play with the music, it will sound out of tune, but it was out of tune for reasons it was in tune to begin with. Um, and basically, yeah, we, um, we just start recording and playing with ideas. Touch yourself. 
So these are Bell's takes on there. So she was kind of putting um, the initial ideas down. You can see it, it looks um, quite messy because it really is because you're kind of you're not doing a proper recording at this time. You're just getting as much information and capturing, capturing the vibe of the song when everybody's kind of feeling it. It's like with all these things, once you listen to something too much, you can get set in a, a, a certain way of doing stuff. So it's good to just literally capture everything. So we changed um, the key of the song because there were certain notes and melodies that Sheila wanted to hit, and it was slightly outside her range. Um, and because myself and Danny created the music before Sheila was in um, the studio, we kind of like had to make a rough guess on kind of roughly where her vocal would, would, would sit comfortably. Um, so in this case, we're only a semitone out. Um, and once you start running through the track and you're kind of vibing, you get a very quick impression whether it's within range or not in range. And, and basically, just use your ears. If it sounds mm. right, then it's, you know, it is right. So in this particular instance, yeah, we took it, I think it was down a semitone, and it just made sense. So the earlier recordings are of a... Um, there's a also a big difference as well between the, the verses and the chorus. So, for example, it starts in quite a low key, yeah. and then it goes up to quite a high key for the chorus and for the ad lib. So it made sense to 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 go to that range, really. Yeah. I think, yeah. Well, you just got to lift. You just kind of got to you know make it sound like it's going somewhere. Yeah. Um, and in this, I mean, because it is a pop track, um, in this instance, we're we're going around a four bar loop. Um, so. I think as the song developed, we did um, introduce some key changes for just before it drops into the chorus, so it, it feels different. Um, but certainly when you're going around a four bar loop, the, the trick is to kind of make it lift. So you've got to make sure that you kind of, I mean, this is all my, it's all subjective, but in, 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 in my experience, you want to kind of keep the verse down there and kind of keep the excitement for the chorus. So you don't want to kind of slam straight into the verse and it's all bells and whistles. Because you, you, you've then got nowhere to go and it won't pick up. Um, so that's, the, you know, it's, it's, it's a musical journey, basically. You kind of want the verse to go that and think, interesting. The bridge goes up a little bit more. And then when it hits the chorus, people know that there's something exciting coming. So um, I, I guess p everybody works differently. So some people will have a formula and they go, it's got to hit that. I mean, what we do, the, the, the people that I brought in to do this with Sheila, so Bell Humble, who's a very experienced top liner, had a lot of success. Danny Harrison, he, he knows his stuff. He's a you know, Grammy-nominated producer. He, you know, so um, we just listen to it and see what sounds right. Um, sometimes you can have a chorus that's very underwhelming, but if it's hooky, it'll work. In this case, because we wanted it, because it is a pop track, we wanted it to be musical. We kind of just, you, you try different things. I mean, we'll see as these, as the tracks develop, things start getting tweaked. So you'll put the initial idea down and think, yeah, that works. And then you'll come back to it and say, right, how can we make that better? How can we make that bit better? How can we make that bit lift? And you start, once you get the melodies down, you start looking at stuff quite subjectively and basically seeing where you can improve it and seeing what works best, And which is why this track, once we've got the initial idea down, so you'll write the song in less than a day, but then it can take days, weeks, however long, um, to just fine tune every part because once it's committed to a recording and people are listening to it, that's it. You don't have a chance to rewrite stuff. Um, so we wanted to try and make it as good as we could for Sheila's voice. It's great to kind of sit with the track as well. I mean, I don't like to have the lyrics in front of me. Uh, when I'm doing my final vocal, I like to close my eyes and just, you know, really feel the lyrics. So it's important to go away with the song, with the ideas, learn it like the back of your hand and then just come in and and not have any lyrics in front of you. So that's what I prefer, and that's how this track came together. So basically, yeah, so we have a, a rough backing, which you can hear there. Which is pretty much how I think we started this track. Um, and we get uh, melody ideas down, different ideas, like we've got um, here. Let me just pull the fader up on this. Oh, there we go, I think the mic's live on that. So this will have uh, different there's a few ideas playing there. Just, um, <laughs> the 
So there's another track going in there. You can see we literally put so many ideas down. Um, and then, yeah, we settle on what sounds good. We try and kind of formulate the song from that. Um, so and once we we get a rough melody idea, Bell and Sheila will then work on the lyrics. And then, again, I can show this on a, um, another project, um, move on. Um, and then we kind of flesh it out. And then, again, just get another rough vocal down on the handheld, how it's going to be. Um, so then, from my point of view, I know kind of like where I need to put sort of backing vocals, and we can just check everything's in place before we start committing to the you know the proper mic. Um, um, okay, so this is as the the writing process has developed. So this would have been um, probably on the same day. So we kind of get all the little melodic bits that we like, stick them together. Sheila and Bell would have uh, lyric this, and we will. I, what I did here with Danny is just put down. Um, a very rough arrangement of how we want the, the, the track to go. Um, and normally when I'm sort of doing this as well, to check the song's working, um, I'll take out the drums, the samples, the track, all the kind of the vibey bits, and literally just strip it down to a piano and a vocal. Um, so you can hear that the melody's working without all the distractions of everything else. So here we've got the guide box um, that Sheila put down, uh, what I'll do. So, so this is how it sounded when we recorded it. It's an open mic again, no headphones, just getting the idea down. So, um, and to check the melodies are working, what I'll do is put it to piano. So I just played in the piano, the chords of the track, uh, very basic, um, put a bit of sparkle on the vocal as well, so it, it gives it a little bit more life. Um, if I sound at ease, you better hear. Back to the start when your touch was so electric Feel the heat of your kiss Body so connected We were one, we were strong Things So I can see that the, everything's kind of working. Um, on this particular version as well, this is where we put the, the chord change um, on the on the pre-chorus, just to give it a lift into the chorus, which I'll just play you. Red lights up the sky, baby, you're amazing There's a chord change here, baby, just to make it a bit more amazing. interesting. So it sets up for the chorus, and you can hear from this as well the the um, uh, the chorus vocal isn't what the final would be. That was how we initially heard it. Um, but until we get the vocal down, we don't know if it's going to be working, not working. So anyway, what we do, we keep the the mic open, we get all the the lyrics, the music everything playing, down. Leave the past behind, feel the fire blazing. And you can hear the drums and stuff in the background. Um, and then what we do is to check that's still working, take out the piano and put the, the rough backing in, which I, I've organised this a little bit more because it makes my job a lot easier. So we've got drums on one channel, sample, um, samples on another, sorry, folder, not a channel. Um, same with the, uh, the actual music. So if Sheila wanted the drums out, we can, you know, it gives a bit of flexibility when we're recording. So then we check, see how that's working with the rough arrangement. So you can hear it's, it, it's still a rough vocal because at this stage, everybody's egos are outside the door and we just yeah. kind of want to make sure that yeah. it's sounding good because everybody knows where it's going to go. Um, and that's it really. And we kind of, uh, we, we you know put new ideas down. I think for the, the, um, the middle eight of this, we might have had a chance. Yeah, we did. Just little ideas to see kind of what works. And the, in the final version, we got rid of that because we figured that it, you know, it, it didn't sound as good as it could be. Um, so basically, yeah, that's what um, we would have before we go into the proper recording um, session of the vocal, um, which I've done on another project, which I can open up and show you. So, but just before I do that, what I would do when I'm recording the vocals, I'd normally just bounce the backing track to a two track. So when I open up the project and recording vocals, there's no processing going on, sort of doing synths and effects that aren't needed. Um, and it just makes everything run a little bit more glitch free. Um, so yeah. 
Okay, right, so once we've got the kind of, um, we know where the song's going, we'll start the uh, recording process, um, which is uh, what I've got on this project. So even though you can still see, um, I've got the, uh, the drum folders up, all the instruments are disengaged. Um, what I've done here is just do a, a, a two track bounce of the instrumental. So it makes it easier, you, you can get low latency as well, so I can take the, um, yeah, the latency right down on, on, on the sound card, so there's no sort of delay or anything like that when Sheila's singing, which can be off-putting. Um, and what we'll do is then Sheila will get up on the, the big mic over there, so we still do it in the room, but at this stage everybody's on headphones, got a little reflection filter up there, um, and a blue Kiwi mic, which was really su suited for Sheila's voice. Right, so we'll set up a recording channel for Sheila so she can hear herself on her headphones. She's got a separate feed over there, which I think is also quite important, so I can um, adjust Sheila's voice independently from what I'm hearing. Um, and put a little bit of sparkle on her voice as well, so as, as opposed to kind of like leaving the channel just kind of flat and uninteresting, I might, I might put a compressor on there, a bit of EQ, a uh, bit of reverb or something just to uh, give a feeling. Um, and then literally we will start recording the song. Um, no real uh, sort of method or particular method I follow for starting this, but um, you normally concentrate on one bit. So, and because we kind of, we knew the song was going to take a leap up melodically, I uh, wanted to warm Sheila's voice up. Um, so we started with the verses basically. Mm. Uh, was Belle in the room when we were doing this? She yeah, was, I she? remember she was in the room actually. Yeah. Um, it was really important to just really, first of all, like you said, warm up the voice, making sure you're going over it with it. And for me, I wouldn't say the most, I wouldn't use the word challenging, but I think um, it was the case of keeping it simple and not over singing. Um, the whole beauty, in my view, and also size view as well, behind this track is that, you know, it is simple and um, I guess the difficulty is always like you want to oversing it because you feel like naturally there should be a big difference between when you when you speak and when you sing, um, and that needed a bit of practice. Obviously, when I took away the song, I knew that I wanted to know it so well that by the time I record it, it comes out effortless, effortlessly, as they say. So yeah, going over it a few times, warming up, and then just um, as I said, going over the verses uh, and making sure they're simple, but with power. So what we do when we kind of like. For example, recording the ver verses, I'll just um, set up a loop on the verse um, with a little bit of pre-roll, maybe a sort of bar or two bars, so there's a little bit of a lead-in. And it'll literally just be on loop um, in Sheila's headphones. And we will keep going um, until we get good takes. Uh, and it might be, you know, 12 takes, 15, whatever it takes. Um, and then I'll be able to kind of comp up the best parts of that basic take, you know, words here. That, that comes after the process. So the important thing when recording vocals, and I think somebody uh, recording a vocal, it, it, their voice will wear out and it, it, get, it gets tiring. So you kind of almost want to get as much information down as you can whilst, you know, they're feeling excited about mm -hmm. it, whilst you're kind of enthused yeah. because, again, you get, you get too used to it. If you listen to s stuff on a loop, you can kind of lose that magic. But I know when we were recording this, we had Belle who was helping Sheila with like delivery and stuff. Mm. So that was really important, actually, the delivery part, because sometimes you know you've got to be objective. Because sometimes you hear it a certain way, but then when you've got you know Belle in the room and Sai, you've got people thinking objectively as well. It's like actually, have you tried singing it in this way? Um, and again, the delivery and the performance and the phrasing, it all comes through so nicely when you're working with a great team. So that was cool. So what we'll do then, we. Um, Record the lead vocal, get the lead vocal down. That's obviously the most important part. That's the thing that people are going to be singing, they're going to be listening to. Um, so, what, like I said, what we'll do, we'll do the verses first of all. Um, but we'll do um, verse one and two and verse three and four at the same time because there's always um, a, a very similar vibe with the verses. And you get in a headspace of it and you understand it. And so that's what we'll do. We're, we'll record all the verses in one go. And basically just keep going till we get the, you know, the, the right takes and then we'd probably move I think in this case we moved on to the pre didn't we yeah pre chorus um, because it just required a little bit more a little a, a slightly different character in the voice um, so again same deal loop up a section so this is the the pre here I think. No, that's the, uh, do you wanna dance so this is 
three. So what we do is just set up a loop point. Do you wanna dance? And literally just keep recording the vocals. These are the, um, down here, this is the, uh, I think the comped vocal from our different takes. But what I do to try and kind of keep everything in order, I've got um, record folders with all the vocals in that we've recorded down here. You see there's stacks of them. So I never, never basically throw anything away. Because it might be you want to go back to it and go, oh, let's try that bit. So I just organize these into record folders so I kind of know where everything is. Um, so like I said, yeah, we'll, we'll do a loop on the pre and we'll do the same with both pre's. So we'll loop that one, keep recording, loop the second one, keep recording. Um, and then we move on to the, onto the chorus, basically. And I think with this particular track, there was two different styles of vocal, weren't yeah. there? So there's kind of a very obvious lead uh, that was kind of high in your register, wasn't mm. there? And then there was the skin, um, skin yeah, bit, which right, was kind yeah. of slightly lower down. So we did record those separately because they just required slightly different delivery, all that kind of... It's like the falsetto and the chest voice and making yeah. sure that the harmonies, are, there are quite a few layers in the choruses, you know, and the difference in the octaves. So um, it was important that the lead stood out and then the backing sounded like the backings, really. Yeah. So. So, and once we've done that, what I'll normally do is just see, like down here, I've got record guide. So that's just that would be my initial comp of what I think are the best bits. So we can put that down and then start laying the backing vocals down. So we've got the. When you hear the music playing. And you can. Here as well, I've got quite a lot of effects on there because I like to kind of create the vibe as we go because it helps everybody sort mm. of picture where it's going to end up. So none of the effects are printed on there. But um, OK, so the effects that I've put on this channel, they aren't in the finished recording. Some of them might have pulled it across, but um, it's just to kind of give a feeling. So we've got the multiband dynamic compressor, the C4 on there, just to kind of bring everything up. Um, I mean, it's very, it's not done with detail this. This is literally just effects slapped on to create a feeling. I'm sorry that's all we've got time for, but if you want to see the rest of it, get the latest issue of Computer Music. <laughs>